Welcome back, it's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at Westworld. And today I am talking about when you should use WordPress and when you should use a framework like Laravel. So before I begin, a couple of you guys have been wondering where have I been for a couple of weeks. Now, truth be told, I have been a little bit busy, but I've also created two or three videos where I wasn't really happy with the content. I thought it was a little bit longer. They were a little bit more tutorial style. It gets a little bit specific. So that's the reason I scrapped the thing so I didn't release any videos at that point of time. Topic of this video, which is when do you select WordPress, the world's most popular CMS, and when do you go with Laravel and a custom option? And this came about because I was talking to a couple of clients who actually asked me the same question, you know, when do I do this? When do I do that? Now let's break it down exactly when you should use this. Now WordPress is a fully functional CMS, meaning that you can probably get by with low code or no code. That means that you don't even have to learn how to code the, uh, the, co the program. Laravel, on the other hand, is a framework level, and this is similar to all the other PHP frameworks out there. If you're building it, if you're seeing it, you need to do a lot of coding on that. So I'll give you a couple uh, benchmarks and a couple of rule of thumbs so that you know when to apply this. The first thing is when speed is important. So if you're not too concerned about what your final product is, but you wanna get it out to the market, I would use WordPress. Okay, the reason is that you're going to save a lot of time and a lot of money getting out to the market to test it, especially if you don't even know whether that's a good idea. To give you an example, a fully stocked WordPress site, well set up, is about $5,000, around there. Another site that costs more money and custom made could be northwards of $25,000, so you don't want to. Uh, spend that kind of money and spend that kind of time until you know your idea is worth pursuing and that you get a good ROI from it. So that's the first criteria. The second criteria, of course, is is it a core component of your business? Now, let's say you make a business or you have a business that's doing some other thing, you're manufacturing or something, and that's not really a core. You want to have some presentation, you want to do some sort of order form, I would go with WordPress CMS because that's not a core part of your business. However, if that is a core part of your business, so if you are actually not only using as a lead generation, but actually performing some functions, user uh, interactions and user experiences, maybe you wanna go with Laravel. And the third thing, right, is if your requirements are very, very specific or not, now let's get down to the nitty gritty of this. I tell a lot of my clients that when you deal with WordPress, please do not customize WordPress. Now I don't specifically do WordPress. We have a partner that we work with uh, at Chili Beans, Sean, who's an excellent WordPress person and he knows exactly what to do. The most important thing that he tells his clients and I, you know, I echo on that, is don't customize your WordPress. You can use plugins, you can use attachments, but customization is very, very slippery slope on CMS, especially on WordPress. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, it's not meant for customization. What am I talking about? I'm talking about not using a plugin that's already out there, a highly well start plugin and trying to sort of bang it in to fit your needs. This is gonna cause a lot of trouble because of a couple of reasons. One, WordPress is meant to be very uh, firm, okay? In terms, it's very locked so that you don't have so many flexibility parts because more moving parts means easier to break. Number two, the architecture is a little bit towards the old uh, part of PHP. I mean, we it's using something called hook architecture, which is basically if you have a process, you insert certain pointers in there, certain gaps called hook that perform this function. So your customization is going to fall in there. Now, the benefit of a hook architecture is that the whole system doesn't go down if something's wrong. However, the amount of custom code, if you're doing a WordPress, do not customize your own plugin. If you're going down that route, those are warning signs that you might have to be looking at a framework. So these are the three points there. So when do you go for a customized Laravel build or a E2 framework or 
It's all the opposites of WordPress. Number one, when you have time to build out your application, you know exactly what you're looking for. You find it very specific. Custom build is gonna save you money long-term being very, very customized. You'll be able to add new features and save a lot of money. Number two, it's gonna be improvements in speed. No matter how fast WordPress is, remember it always comes bulk loaded. It's always a package buffet deal. Whereas if you go with the framework, you can strip out everything you don't want, put whatever you want. It can be really, really fast. And the fourth point is that if that is your key part of your business, that if you, if that's only your business and that's the only thing you want to go customize because you can bring in features that are not now. Here comes the last part of the equation, which is you're currently in WordPress and you're deciding when do you go to Laravel or you want to go on the framework. This is a big area that all of you guys will probably be thinking about on the next level of your business. So when do you make that transition? I would say the minute you start seeing the entry of these kind of factors and the minute you have the budget to make that transition already, WordPress is never meant to be a long-term competitive advantage. So you have to do it a bit earlier before you're building up a lot of stuff on your WordPress. The minute you say, I need to customize this, or I'm trying to find a plugin for it, I'm finding, that is the warning sign. And that's when you go back and say, okay, it's time to go custom. It's time to look at it because this is always gonna lead us to the custom sooner or later. Sooner or later, what I always have a lot of clients with is that they built up so much functionality with their WordPress site and it's very hard to transition it. It's very hard because they've got plugins, they've got custom code, it's all bundled in there. So a new build is gonna take such a long time, very, very big. So what you wanna do is once you start seeing these symptoms, right, that you're finding you need a little bit of custom code to it, you're looking for plugins that don't quite fit. You know, they're kind of a little bit long here, they're kind of like a little bit long here. Everything isn't. That's the point where you start looking at your budget and start looking at whether you can get a, a customized build in the framework. So again, make that transition, make it early before it gets too big. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.